Okay, welcome everyone to EnviroTech's second webinar about the first marine certificate course for marine habitats, conservation and restoration in the entire world. Mm. My name is Paula Lancaster. I am the Assistant General Manager at EnviroTech. Beside me is my colleague and host. Yeah, hey Paula. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Scott Wallace and I'm a marine trainer here at EnviroTech. As Paula mentioned, you know, we're offering the first uh, vocational course in marine, which is so, so exciting. Um, before we continue with our, with our webinar, um, we're just going to do an acknowledgement uh, of country and of the custodians of this land upon which we're meeting today. So Envirotech would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land, waters and communities across Australia and pay our respect to elders past and present and to the emerging future young First Nations leaders. Well, to begin with, let's talk about the basis of this webinar. So for this webinar, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be listening to a number of speakers. Some of them are our own staff, our marine trainers. Um, we have one of our students and we also have industry representatives. The purpose of the webinar is to launch our vocational placement. We have our first lot of graduates graduating. Very soon, very, very, very soon, next month. So we would like to be able to offer them work placement. Presently, we have industry who've come on board and fortunately they're as excited and keen as we are to be able to be engaged in work placement support for our students. So the webinar today is to let you all know about this, uh, to encourage you to contact us so that we can make you part of this amazing, amazing yeah. project. Our networks are expanding, our connections are expanding, and it's really going to take us all coming together, uniting, supporting each other, um, and co-creating these opportunities to better protect the marine environment mm. and to create these opportunities for students to continue to immerse themselves and really contribute um, in so many ways in which they're so passionate to. They really are. Mm. And for the webinar, we actually have a live question and answer. We have some of our expert marine trainers waiting online. So if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel yeah. free to type them in the chat. Pop them in the comments. Obviously, you can contact us after the webinar at any stage. We will in fact contact you via email after the webinar. Um, and I'll talk to you more about the purpose of that later on. What I'd like to do now is to cross to our amazing, I really need to st stop saying amazing, okay? I'm just so excited. I, I, I know I get so excited. Uh, we're going to cross to Shelley Bankiat. Shelley is the founder and CEO and the person who has really driven this. An amazing visionary. You just said amazing again. Let's see Shelley. <laughs> Thank you for joining us on World Ocean Day. My name is Shelley Bankiat and I'm the founder and director of Envirotech Education. We have been operating as a registered training organization for the last 13 years. We recognize the Aboriginals and Torres Strait Islanders heritage, rights and ancient wisdom for sustainable empowerment. We aspire to connect the marine protection accreditations to these values and provide educational justice, access and equity to all, and to empower marine communities and life is one functional ecosystem. The Marine Protection Vet Reform was initiated by Envirotech in 2016 after the large-scale bleaching events that affected the Great Barrier Reef and continued with similar events all around the world. Education systems are also somehow at fault for addressing this impact for the marine environments. In Australia and internationally, vocational education systems offer rapid, practical and strategic training in conservation, land management, construction, marine development. However, marine conservation restoration was excluded. The exclusion of the marine protection from the vet industry meant also exclusion of many communities for marine protection, professional jobs, and locally managed projects. Indigenous islanders are an example for communities that have ample of marine conservation projects opportunities yet are mostly prevented from marine protection jobs due to the education glass ceiling and absence of professional traineeships. The marine vet reform provides access to professional practical marine training products and relevant job skills that are specific for marine environment challenges and opportunities. 
We invested in exporting the Australian marine protection vet accreditations to governments that are making efforts towards environmental education reform. We introduced the marine vet IP into the United Arab Emirates, to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Israel, where marine protection projects are becoming a blue carbon industry strategy. On 18 December 2020, in a joint industry submission led by INLOC, Blue Planet Marine and Environmental Education, we submitted to the Queensland government that marine conservation restoration must be declared in Queensland as critical priority occupations. We also submitted the declaration of apprenticeships and traineeships and the allocation of user choice funding arrangements to marine protection industry employers. Once vocational technical marine protection accreditations are accepted by the Australian states as apprenticeships and traineeships, the marine protection industry will embark a sustainable new direction. Employers will benefit from entitlements, employers' financial incentives, subsidies, and funded training for eligible employment of apprenticeships and traineeships, same as offered to other trades. We are grateful for the marine protection industry members, indigenous communities and schools that supported the VET environmental reform submission. However, despite the great efforts of research, development and industry collaboration, the lack of government response so far to our submission indicates that further marine industry, indigenous communities and school lobby efforts are still required in order to establish the urgent need for funded marine protection VET training and accreditation. In the absence of government recognized marine protection apprenticeships and traineeships, we are hosting this webinar today to reach out to industry, indigenous islanders and coastal communities to connect with us and independently offer the first marine protection on the job training opportunities to our current students and students to come. The purpose of this webinar is to invite marine industry to host our first year graduates into unpaid professional marine protection vocational work placements, invite indigenous communities to connect with us for the delivery of marine professional vocational accreditations to create tomorrow's jobs today and develop marine protection projects in their island communities, to invite new schools to accept into their curriculum these exciting and interactive marine protection accreditations that offer engaging blended online training with life-changing marine practical experiences. Embarking in 2016 with a commitment to develop the first worldwide marine protection vet accreditation was a challenging and rewarding journey, and we ask now for your help. We are ready and committed to integrating our first year graduates with industry and indigenous communities. I wish to thank you for your participation and I'm proud to invite our Australian and international marine expert panel to present the technical vocational work placement opportunities that are emerging in Australia and internationally for a new professional marine story of hope, access and equity resulting from innovative education reform. Thank you. Uh, we've just had some word that there's a little bit of a technical hitch with some of the social media. Um, if that's you, we apologise. We're, um, we're trying to fix it. It's like I said to you, Scott, all the practices, nothing went wrong. <laughs> no matter how many run throughs. <laughs> so there's some, there's some audio feedback. Yeah, so we're just, just working on it at the moment. So yeah. thank you for your patience. So we're going to continue yeah, um, with the rest of our loaded, exciting, diverse schedule this afternoon. Yeah, and you, this will be recorded. So you can always go back and listen to some of those videos if you missed anything. What I'd like to comment on is that Shelley was talking about the vet reform. And I know that many of the people we've been engaged with understand how phenomenal this is because it has never happened before. Yeah. But I think that there's some people out there who perhaps, given that it's a reform that's happened with VET, they don't always necessarily understand what's happening. Yeah. And so often when I, when I share with people my position and role here at Envirotech, we talk about education within the VET sector. And no, it's not uh, that I'm working as a vet on animals. It's <laughs> vocational education and training. So if we can look at you know uh, tertiary institutions like universities, for example, that's part of the higher education schemes. Whereas vet, um, there's a whole number of registered training organisations such as ourselves that are offering 
a range of certificates and diplomas. Which is hands-on. That's mm. the biggest difference with that yeah. is the hands-on. And that's what industry is so excited about because before Marine was the only way really into employment was through university. And whilst that is a, a, a fantastic avenue for people, some people just want to get out there and work. And so what we're providing is people who actually have the skills and can go into the workforce and make huge differences. Definitely. You know, I completed four years of, of science and marine ecology and honours um, at uh, Griffith University and had a fantastic experience while I was there. But to, to think that we can offer a very condensed, um, involved programs that really focus on a range of valuable skills mm. um, and to deliver that at a level that's accessible um, and you know flexible for people. So, yeah, I you know I have a few students who are studying because they intend some of my high school students their intention is to go on to marine biology mm -hmm. and they understand that this hands-on training is really going to help them when they go to university because as we know you know when you do you really learn so then when they start learning it's going to make a lot of sense and then there are some who are studying it because they just want to get out there they want to get out there and they want to start working so we have um, an amazing company that are doing some fantastic work. Yeah, so next we're going to be hearing uh, from uh, Matilda, who is representative of Tangaroa Blue. And Matilda will chat more about what they, work they do, but they're a not-for-profit organization um, running some wonderful initiatives. And they've I've participated in a number of beach cleanups over the years. All of the data from the marine debris collection mm -hmm. has gone to Tangaroa Blue's oh. massive global database uh, on, on plastic pollution and marine debris. So let's uh, hear from Matilda. Mm -hmm. Tangaroa Blue Foundation is an Australia wide not for profit organisation dedicated to the removal and prevention of marine debris, one of the major environmental issues worldwide. Tangaroa Blue delivers the Reef Clean project, which aims to remove and prevent marine debris along the Great Barrier Reef, and is funded by the Australian Government's Reef Trust Fund. Here in Australia, not only are our shores littered with debris, particularly in our more remote areas, such as in Cape York, but as a nation, we are also massive contributors to the plastic problem. The Great Barrier Reef is already suffering from increased pollution and the threat of anthropogenic climate change. This is further accentuated by the ever-growing plastics industry. At Tangaroa Blue, we believe that educating the next generation is one of the best long-term strategies for environmental change. The need for knowledgeable on-ground workers has grown as funding in the area of ocean conservation and effective waste management continues to expand. But part of Australia's strategy of developing and improving its workforce. By funding vet employment pathways in the marine and environmental protection sector, we can equip tomorrow's leaders with the skills needed to tackle the world's waste problem. You know, maybe I'm ignorant, but what I was really um, disturbed about when I saw that video was the amount of rubbish. I mean, I know the Gold Coast is a beautiful place. I've, I've never seen rubbish like that. Mm. Is that is that real? Yeah, it's, it can be it can be pretty confronting when we start, you know, seeing images, watching videos, documentaries, and really just learning about what's happening to the environment, what's happening to the oceans and the whole earth community, essentially. Mm. Um, and it's important that we understand and accept the truth and the facts of the situations and then start focusing on solutions and steering, you know, towards um, towards positive change in those areas. So, yeah, and Tangerel Blue, I mean, they're doing such a sensational job. The other thing is that they are funded by the government. Mm. So it's great to see that our government is supportive of these changes. And that's one of the things that we've put in for. We've put in for support from the government so that we can actually get this course across to everyone who yeah. wants to do the course and have the qualifications. And obviously by coming on board, if we have an army of people, then the difference we can make and the results for our future generations in terms yeah. of restoring and conserving. Yeah. It looks really good. Super valuable. It sure is. It sure is. 
So next we're going to uh, listen to David Lennon, who is one of the marine trainers here at Envirotech, but also has been running his own business and his own initiatives around um, ocean conservation and protection um, with uh, ocean sustainability. Mm, and he's going to talk to us uh, twice today, one in relation to his industry, yeah. um, but also as one of our marine trainers. So first up as one of our marine trainers, the opportunities of work placement and how he sees it's going to benefit our students. Hi, my name is David Lennon, and it's an exciting time at Envirotech as our first students are getting ready for their work placement. And it's such an essential part of their coursework. We've passed the point in the planet in life where we can just get by by minimizing impacts that are happening out there due to development. It's time we need more planet mechanics. We need more people repairing the impacts that have already happened. And this is where the CERT 3 in marine conservation and restoration comes in. We're training a new army, if you like, if you want to think of it that way. We're training a new army of people that have got the skills and the passion to do something about the damage that's already been done and how it restore our environment. It's such a crucial phase for them now to enter some workplaces and get that hands-on experience and share their knowledge and their passion. We're having a positive change, whatever that might be and wherever they get the placement. They're excited. We've got a lot of excited students that are very passionate, very capable, and they bring other skills to the, the task as well. Some of them might have a marketing background or sales or multilingual, engineering, science, there's a whole range of other skills that they can bring to a placement and help benefit the business. The students can provide a range of benefits to a business. They've covered a range of different topics throughout their year of study. For example, making a presentation, how to do clam seeding, how to build a coral nursery, how to conduct various survey techniques, transects, quadrats, photography. They've used a range of different cameras on land and underwater honing their skills. Some of the other ones are benthic monitoring, for example, survey and report on fish populations, plan for environmental conservation and restoration projects, use tools to carry out basic tasks underwater. They've used pneumatic drills and impact drivers. So there's a whole range of topics and skills that they bring to any business that they're helping out. And of course, it's at no charge to the business during their work placement period. They can help you with that project that you've perhaps been wanting to get around to, but just haven't found the time to kick off. Perhaps they can help initiate it and get it underway. Perhaps there's an overload of tasks that they can help you with that you've been swamped with. Perhaps there's some research that they need to do or some background research that needs to be done, some data collection some data entry, there's perhaps field work. They're quite capable out in the field, working on boats, diving, or working in the office, whatever you need. And it's not as though they're doing work placement because they have to, they really actually want to. They're passionate about the subject, they're passionate about conservation and restoration. It is quite unbelievable since I've been working with these students, seeing their passion and their ideas, their initiative. It's fantastic to work with them and I'm sure you'll enjoy working with them as well. They really get into it. Any topics that we've covered, they've really been un into them 100% and tackling them, sucking up new knowledge, learning, doing extra learning outside of the course, putting projects together. They've had to put a number of different work plans together, including workplace health and safety plans. And they do them as a group. They work well together as groups. And there's some natural leaders amongst our gang. And you get to interview them as well. So we can make a short list, for example, of students that we think have the same interests with the work that you need them to do. You can have an interview with them and make sure they're a good fit for your business. So we look forward to working with you and helping pick some good students that um, for their work placement that can help you out and make a difference. You know, what excites me about what we just saw is that that is actually our students, the majority of that footage. Are there practical experiences where they've been out in the field? You can see the diversity of what they are engaged in and also how excited they are. Playing with corals, out in the mangroves, on the sand dunes, and there's so the Gold Coast especially is such a beautiful area, diversity of habitats, mm. and really this entire planet. Mm. Like there's, <laughs> there's so much everywhere, and yeah, so it's great hearing from, from David just sharing some of the opportunities that are that are available. Um, and we're again we're urging our industry representatives to to come on board to partner with us to 
create those uh, spaces if they don't exist already for our students to be able to support the work that you're doing. Yes, and we want those industry people, not just from the Gold Coast, all of Australia. We have got people throughout Australia who are registering with our course, who are asking us how we can come and support them so that they as an industry can actually you know, support us in being part of the course. So it doesn't matter where you are in Australia or in fact in the world, uh, we're looking for placements everywhere. And we, ha we know that there's habitats that vary and that's what's exciting too. And the um, remarkable thing about the course is that there are actually units that we don't teach that are um, that have been registered and have been, um, I can't even think of the word now, they've been accredited. Mm. They've been accredited and when you go to, for example, if we're going to teach up north, then we would put more units in corals because they have a lot more coral. Yeah. So this is what's great about the course. It's flexible in terms of the habitat where the course is being taught. Yeah. And I think that's a that's so clever the way that that was organised. What we're going to do now is cross to another trainer, and this trainer is Cassie Grover. Cassie Grover is actually a high school teacher just like I was for 20 years. Wow. And she is um, working with us. She has um, she has so many contacts in industry, given that she's up in Cooktown and so close to the Great Barrier Reef. Her experiences and expertise are really supporting us. And she has one of her students, who is one of our pilot students undertaking the course. And so we asked Cassie to interview Shaylee to give you a perspective of how Shaylee is going with the course and how industry has been supporting her already. Let's head up to North Queensland. Let's go. Hey, how are we Shaylee? Good, how are you? Good. How are you finding the course so far? It's really good. Oh, that's really good. So what sort of things have you learned? Uh, so much. I've had so many practicals. Like it's really more than what meets the eye. It's like I've done heaps of studies and researches with like marine biologists and it's been like an experience. That's awesome, that's awesome. So what have the courses required you to do? I've done clam seeding and that's been practical like getting out on the field and photography. That was really fun yep. because I've already studied photography last year and I really enjoy underwater photography. <laughs> so um, I've also done Conservation. conservation. Yeah. And um, so that was sort of like an introduction to the course. It was still 14 units, big unit, but it was just like everything just like snatched together. In the first unit, we did like salinity testing, water testing, temperature, and like where the one of the closest towns to the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah. So it just really shows. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. So, what sort of industry engagement have you had so far? Well, it pretty much all started with all my marine studies when I did work experience with Wavelength yeah. and just the crew and that was so nice and since then John's given me a lot more opportunities to get out on the field with them and do like more work experience in it. Yeah. So I've been on Wavelength a lot of times. So what are you doing when you're out in the field? Um, a bunch of things. Um, so. Just recently I went out to do quadrant squares with them and yep. um, other people were doing surveys on the reef and I've seen the grandpa do eye on the reef yep. surveys. Um, I've done plate coral research yeah. and branch coral research <laughs> with the UTS students from Sydney. Yeah, That was really fun. <laughs> so I've seen out on Wavelength that they're starting to do this little program with um, terracotta tiles. So what are they doing with those out there? So they they plant these little terracotta tiles with like a little starfish in the yeah. middle. And um, it's just, it's like a propagator sort of thing. They encourage coral to grow on them. Yes, it is quite like a lot of time to grow. <laughs> They've done like research on which ceramic goes quicker. Yeah. And it's terracotta. Yes. A good one. A good one. So um, it attracts the algae and a good habitat for the to and um, at the moment I have to make 2,000 of oh, them. <laughs> so you're helping the project that's out on the reef by making 2,000 terracotta tiles. Yeah, I've been doing it for three days and I've made 
268. <laughs> well done. That's going to be a lot in the firing. Yes. So besides Wavelength, who else have you worked with so far? Uh, I've worked with Triangle Blue with beach cleanups and we're currently planning a beach cleanup with Sea and Sea Shepherd yep. in November. So hopefully we get out to some of the islands and do a few beach cleanups there. Yep, that would be really cool. And also you're working with uh, South Cape York Catchments with um, down on our local beaches, so down on um, Walker Bay. Yeah. So that's another one that you're also involved in. So what else, like, um, if you were working out in the field, would you like to do some more data analysis, like gathering all that data and finding out what it all means? Yeah, like, I do enough of it, but it's never like, it's, it's never, never enough. enough. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. Like, yeah. The course gives me a lot of it, but I like doing it. I like doing it. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really cool. What about working alongside more professionals so that you're working with them, not just working with them? Yeah. 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 So the more opportunities we can get you out there, the better. Yeah. You're lucky in the fact that you do have those access points. Um, you're lucky in the fact that we work with JCU and the Island and those people. But um, yeah, the more that we can get involved, the better. What's the major benefit you can say by doing this course? Just the knowledge and People are really good. Everything. Yeah, because it's endless. So, what are you going to do with your certificate uh, when you're finished? So, I either want to go to uni or do something involved with my own teaching. I don't really know yet, so yep. it comes my way, it comes my way. Yep. I've had a few opportunities there, like people are offering me to do stuff after school with them. So you're on your right track. Yeah. As long as you're enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Shaylee. <laughs>how lucky is Shaylee? So fantastic. I'm so grateful to all those industry people up north who have exposed her and, and others to these, you know, great experiences. And this is exactly what we're asking for with this work placement. We want students to be able to go out into those work environments to make a difference, to learn, to grow. And to contribute as well. And one thing that I found was throughout my studies and my experience of volunteering and, and placement opportunities was that it just opens more and more doors, you know, mm. to lean into an opportunity that seems interesting or you feel like, mm, I want to check this out, even if it's for a week or a few months or any particular period of time, it helps you as someone who's exploring passions and career opportunities to refine what you want to do more of and also what you want to do less of. But ultimately, at the end of the day, whatever you're putting your time and energy towards in terms of placement and volunteering, it's contributing, you know, to, to something positive. Yeah, and I think that, uh, as you know, I'm not Marine. Um, I come from an English background. But what I've learned in my time working here at Envirotech is that the marine industry is so vast. Mm, There's so many, from diverse. tourism to education to fisheries, like it's just huge. And I would imagine that especially... Um, High school students who may not have had a lot of experience out in the marine industry, they may not know exactly where they want to go. They know they love the ocean, but they're not sure which area to work in. Or what so. they can do. And still, you know, after having spent many years working in the marine field, there's still so much I haven't been exposed to, so much I don't know that even exists. So that's just so exciting. It keeps things so, so fresh. Mm. Yeah. It does. And I think that our team of marine trainers is just growing and growing with such expertise and part of the expertise is the the way that all of you have had different industry experience mm. and we have people who actually have their own company yeah definitely so um next we're going to be uh, hearing from dean philpot who is another um member of our marine marine team here at envirotech and Dean has been pioneering a number of initiatives in around the Moreton Bay uh, area. And so Dean's going to talk about some more, expand upon some of those uh, workplace uh, opportunities yeah. and talk about the, the, the things that he's created and share some of his vision for how he's been contributing to positive change. Yeah, and how he can contribute now to students and work placement. Thanks, Dean. Hey everyone, so um, joining me today here at Talabadra Creek down on the Gold Coast, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my business, which is the Morton Bay Restoration Initiative. It was formed in 2020 and it uh, aims to, aspires to unify both 
community land and ocean based restoration practices. So what that means is unifying community goals that can include working with local households to establish native gardens for our pollinators and our bees, creating these these corridors on the land of artificial marine habitat restorations, to your coral reef restoration, mangrove restoration, the seeding of seagrass, which is obviously important to all of our neighboring habitats within Moreton Bay, looking at the charismatic animals that we have in the region, such as the dugong, the two resident species of turtles, and the transient species of dolphins and, and whales and other animals that use that environment. And then to me, the most important side is the community side, working with the land element as well, interviewing members of the community to find out what the word restoration means to them and what sort of projects they would like to see happen within the community, land or ocean spaces. The ethic of my business is to unite everyone into one effort to help the environment on all different fronts, whether that's the water, the land or our communities, empowering people to become active leaders in restoration work. So the, the mission or the, and the vision of the Moreton Bay Restoration Initiative is to create partnerships to accomplish goals together. It's working with local Aboriginal and Indigenous knowledge, it's working with uh, community and school groups for education purposes. An example of a couple of projects that we're involved with is, is the first BioRock uh, project reef. So there's going to be a current applied to that reef that helps the coral grow, encourages them to put down a limestone skeleton far in on the reef space, whilst we also speak to other local organisations about um, supplying us with structures such as oyster cages to help improve local water quality. And I want to build as many partnerships as I can within a small space of time. So in the near future, I'm going to be advertising expression of interest roles as jobs on like Morton's Bay jobs boards to openly invite people to um, whatever their background is to either um, lift up their passion and bring their skills to the initiative or if they're unsure about what area they may want to be involved in in the environment industry, help them by um, allowing them to explore different areas. So they might start off by, off by working in an office, but then step into the marine space, step into like writing funding grant applications, going out into communities and interviewing communities to find out where they fit, um, which would help them massively within their environment career. If you've got a business or skills that you want to contribute to the initiative, that's where I feel like I offer quite a unique space. So I've seen local advertisements for a local welder. I'm approaching everybody with open arms. So if, you, if you're if you an artist and you're more of a, um, have an artistic mind or you're good with technology and can work on a website, um, these are areas that I'm looking to expand upon. Even unsure about which area that you would like to gain more skills in, that's okay. I can, I'm gonna um, be coming up with a huge list, of, an array of tasks to, of um, stuff that I wish to achieve over the next financial year, um, which I can allocate to different students. And um, I'm hoping to provide as many opportunities as I can to either feed the passion that a student brings to the initiative or to help them explore um, the area that they could potentially want to work in in the future. So it's going to build up a volunteer foundation, but hopefully in the same process, what I aspire to do is create uh, paid work opportunities at the same time. So it's going to be a bit of um, hopefully the best of both worlds. So the most exciting thing about these uh, VET uh, marine habitat conservation and restoration placements is the fact that the course provides all the students with such unique skills that um, you don't really get a chance and opportunity to gather in um, in studying uh, in marine biology sort of degree at university. I've, I feel like my uh, the practical skills I have picked up through university was somewhat limited. It was only once I stepped out into the field and went volunteering in different spots around the world that um, I was able to get more hands-on experience, which is something I always crave for, I think. The true excitement of looking at these students and how they come alive with each of the activities that we've set for them is that everyone's got such a unique perspective on um, a particular task and um, everybody has something different to, to give. I really look forward to work with some of the students um, as part of the Morton Bay Restoration Initiative because these students, whether they're from Brazil or from France or from Australia, they um, have had different upbringings and have different experiences that um, I really feel will be valuable to a new uh, community-based organisation such as the one I, I founded. Here we go. 
So I know that uh, you and Dean, uh, along with uh, David, have been out in the field, especially the last two weeks. Yes, it's been a lovely, a lovely time. We're in a Spent half a day in Tally Creek for a few days last week. Such a um, tough job. Using our pneumatic drills to install temporary diversity handsers. So we installed these little, you know, small scale artificial reefs and we had to bring, take them out of the water. Mm. But even then, we already had fish coming wow. to, uh, to want just to hang out and check out They're what's like going on. They're like a little on. house, so aren't they? They're yeah. ready to move in. You know, yeah. real estate's tough on the Gold Coast. Yeah. So even, the, even the fish were like <laughs> ready to come in. And, and yeah, that's I've, something that I've been speaking to Mayor Tate about, mm -hmm. that um, we know that there's that ma amazing project that's happening out of the spit. And I was saying to him about, you know, the skills and the diversity enhancers and that we would like to have some places around the coast, mm -hmm. not only because we want our students to practice doing that, but it is going to improve the habitats on the Gold Coast. And it also means that our students can then monitor, because like you said, you had to pull it out. Imagine being able to go back in a week or a month yeah, and collect it'd data. It'd be great to increase the, the biodiversity on the Gold Coast with some artificial reefs and mm. some other, you know, diversity enhancers mm. for sure. That'd mm. be fantastic. Yeah. Um, so as Dean was Dean highlighted towards the end um, of that of that chat, you know, we have just as human human beings, we're so diverse, we're so unique. We bring different skills, knowledge, perspectives mm. to the table. And we can really harness that and, and make the most of that uniqueness and diversity that we all hold to come together to generate solutions and, mm. and create create change in a, in a really, really powerful way. And that diversity is within our marine group. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have also a marine trainer. Well, we have a number who are overseas, but we're going to hear from one of our marine trainers mm. in, at the moment in the Sorry. In a moment. <laughs> in a moment. <laughs> we have we have a team, yeah, Middle East, uh, uh, Asia, water. across across Oz, uh, Middle East, yeah, pretty a wonderful expansive team. So yeah, we're going to be hearing uh, from uh, Dr. Tiffany Delport over in the United Arab Emirates, who's going to be discussing and delving more into the practical skills uh, in marine work placement. Um, Dr. Delport is a marine conservation specialist. Has been. You know, previously a PhD student, academic researcher. She is an amazing consultant. So let's uh, hear from, from Tiffany. Hi, my name is Tiffany. I'm a marine conservation specialist based in the United Arab Emirates. So I've been engaged in the marine industry as a PhD student, academic researcher and environmental consultant for over 10 years. Most recently, I have onboarded with Envirotech Education to support in the export of the marine habitat conservation and restoration VET accreditations to the GCC. There are a number of different verticals for traineeship and employment within the marine industry. And one of the most important is within marine conservation. So conservation describes the protection and restoration of our fragile marine ecosystems. The easiest way to describe some of the skills that are required for both traineeship and placement on coral restoration projects is through an example. So over the last year, I have been engaged in directing a large scale coral conservation project in the Emirate of Abu Dhabi. The objective of this project is the establishment of a large scale coral nursery. In order to achieve project outcomes, a number of different activities are performed. There are a number of different team members involved in coral conservation projects. Those can include academic specialists, project management, but most importantly is the workforce. Now this workforce may be comprised of individuals who've been working in the industry for a number of years, but it also contains a segment of trainees. Our trainees are primarily responsible for a lot of the field work that occurs. So it's really important that these individuals are trained in different practical skills and techniques. Some of these skills include the use of quadrats underwater to assess coral coverage. Another important skill set is to be able to use tools underwater for the establishment of a coral nursery. When we have a look at the area around the coral nursery itself, it's important that trainees on our projects are able to use line transects 
to be able to assess the generalized ecosystem health fish surveys and assessment of benthic substrate. A lot of interns on our projects are responsible for photography and videography associated with the project for capturing information underwater relating to the project itself. Aside from the practical skills, there are a number of soft skills that are also important. Within regions like the United Arab Emirates, you have a number of different individuals collaborating on projects from different nations, different ethnicities, different backgrounds. So it's really important that interns are able to communicate with different members of project faculty. Communicating project outcomes to team members as well as key stakeholders and clients for showcasing the progression of the project itself. So the conservation sector within the United Arab Emirates currently focuses all of its efforts on an expatriate workforce. So what we're having a look at or what we're seeing is a highly skilled workforce of professors, academics and PhDs performing basic marine fieldwork activities. It's really important that we try and bridge this gap with work placement opportunities. So that way we can empower vet graduates to get meaningful work placement opportunities. Um, so this is a gap that currently exists on marine conservation projects, one that we're trying to bridge. Marine habitat conservation and restoration vet accreditations provide an opportunity for students to engage within the marine industry really quickly. With successful work placement, these students can then gain the relevant skills that they need to participate in marine conservation projects. It's also extremely beneficial for employers and operators of the various conservation projects in that they have access to a larger pool of individuals to form their workforce, and ultimately reducing operational costs and improving the speed at which conservation projects can be completed. By empowering students through vet education, we can actually facilitate this. So we can have a larger workforce that are able to participate on these projects. Having worked on a number of different conservation projects in the region, it can be quite difficult to attract the right talent as well as a skilled workforce that's readily available to engage in our conservation projects. Vet education in marine conservation bridges this gap. At this point in time, there is limited opportunity for traineeship or integration into conservation projects. But if students were to come to our projects with the right skill sets already developed, this would make it much, much easier to integrate them. Before we comment on Tiffany, mm -hmm. I'd just like to say thank you very much to our IT team. We um, they managed to fix the glitch somewhere between the last tech rehearsal. A gremlin came in and got into the system. Mess with the vibe. As it does. But please be assured that you can go and watch the recordings of the videos. And once again, please accept our apologies. Mm -hmm. Tiffany, Tiffany in the United Emirates. I think she said it perfectly. Skills. If we have skilled people, we need skilled people, then we will be able to employ people. And so, of course, with COVID, we can see that this course also allows and gives opportunities for students to go overseas, yeah. as well as the students overseas who are studying to come here to Australia. Definitely, you know, no matter no matter where you're studying, you can bring uh, the, the, the skills, this knowledge and qualifications you have and start exploring, start traveling the world, start putting, you know, delving into um, projects, wherever you feel called to explore. And within the marine space, there's, you can work in a whole range of different ecosystems. So I remember uh, about five, six years ago, I volunteer um, an internship, sorry, in South Africa, um, mm. with doing shark conservation. So there was, you know, such a, a great opportunity over there. So there's things all around the world, right? And for those who aren't aware, just a friendly reminder, today is International World Oceans Day. It is. And Happy World Ocean Day. Without, if the oceans die, we die. It's as simply as, as simple as that. So we need to be doing everything we can as a collective and as individuals to better protect, defend and look after the oceans. So a little fun fact, the oceans are filled with a whole range of life, but uh, phytoplankton, the phytoplankton mm. in the ocean mm. provide us with more oxygen than all the trees wow. on earth wow. so we get more oxygen from the oceans than than land mm. so so we yeah. really really do need to be looking after our ocean and as we know the land and the ocean yeah. are connected it's all connected it's all connected 
Uh, we now would like to hear from Professor Nadav. Professor Nadav is in Israel. He was paramount in writing this, this certificate course. And did I say he's from Israel? Not sure. Hmm. Well, Professor Najad uh, resides in Israel. So as you can see, we're getting all around the globe here. We're certainly having a huge effect mm. in Biotech and the Marine course. So let's hear from Professor Najad. Hello, my name is Nadab Shashar and I'm Professor of Marine Biology. I'm the head of the Marine Biology and Biotechnology Program of Ben Gurion University in Eilat in Israel. I also head, I'm the chairman, of the Eilati Society for Nature Conservation, the Desert and Sea Society. This is actually one of the oldest societies for nature conservation in Israel. One of the things which we do is we take care of the sea, the coastal environment and what's in it. That means we do monitoring, we do cleanups, we do restoration projects, we even construct the fishing reef. So we do a very range, wide range of activities, both in the sea and on the coast. And let's face it, we are now in a shortage of people that have hands-on training and know how to get the job done. Most of our experts are graduate students, people who have their masters or their PhD, which actually have a very limited hands-on experience. They are very known about the, th about the theory, they have very good knowledge of the theoretical and analysis background, but we really are short of people that actually know how to do the job. And you don't need a PhD to do a quadrant or to plant sea grasses. So we need these trained people that have hands-on job experience and knowledge, that know how to work, that know how to work in the, in the beach, that know how to work in the sea, and for these people, they have very good chance of uh, actually employment. They're high, they will be in high demand, especially in the coming years. And this is true not only for myself in the project we have here, but also for projects I'm involved with in other coasts of Israel, in the Mediterranean, or in, around the world, for example, in Latin America. There is a real need for this type of trained people. I would like to invite any graduate of the Marine Habitat Conservation Restoration Program, if they want to have some uh, international experience and they want to come and join and work with us here in Israel, we will be most welcome and we will be very happy to get them uh, to work with us. Thank you very much. Yet someone else telling us that they want skilled workers, that they need skilled workers, that they want us to go to their country, that they're inviting us. It's so exciting. Oh, what happened to Scott? Oh, thank you. Went somewhere here. Oh, I don't know where it <laughs> we went. Hi, Tal, how are you? Good, Paula, hi. Tal is our academic manager, and I've asked Tal to join us today to talk about the actual processes behind the work placement and the benefits. Yeah, so let's start with the benefits. I think that uh, both Tiffany and Adav pretty much covered uh, all, all the necessary things. Mm -hmm. for, um, and I think the key word here is employability skills. Mm -hmm. um, just like both of them said, vocational education training is all about hands on practical mm -hmm. knowledge and skills mm -hmm. that this is what exactly employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? You're, you're, you're right. <laughs> okay, so um, obviously it, it's about people that drive the economy and things that were mentioned like uh, projects that are being held, looking for the right people, looking to recruit people who are passionate, skilled, knowledgeable, mm. and can really have this contribution. I mean, imagine yourself, Paula, as an employer, if you would put an advertise for uh, someone to recruit to do the job, would you want to see someone who studied the theory or have a practical hands-on knowledge? I would like them to have the practical, obviously understand the theory behind it yeah. but yeah if it was yeah if it's a project situation definitely having those skills and and also because the ocean is so fragile if you don't have knowledge and you go out and participate in a project like before i knew anything about this i would just walk across seagrass there you go i i didn't know that i was causing damage there you go and then i'll give you another benefit it's not only about the knowledge and skills 
tra people who are studying this qualification are passionate mm. about marine. This is a very unique course. There's I, no other like that. In I the know the excitement when I see the students and they're just buzzed all the time. Uh, it, yeah, they really are unique people and they're coming from such diverse, you know, from people who want to find a new career, from people who have been working as, you know, we've had people who are vets, who are marine biologists, etc. Like they're just all coming on board. Exactly. So in one sentence then, or two, what's the benefit for an employer? Why should they do this? So, um, as I said, employability skills, if you want to drive your business, your your vision, your charisma, and have the right people in place, that's your opportunity as an employer. Mm. Okay, so you can search no more, you can contact us, we'll be more than happy to engage you as a business partner to our program, mm -hmm. and definitely we can commit to have, you know, passionate students, skills, knowledgeable. And not to be negative, Tal, but I know that some people they see that if they take on a student, oh, all the work they have to do, how difficult it is. Like, and I think that's that's mostly where the difference is. Uh, like we said, um, be, because vet is hands on. So you know, studying things like like quadrants and, and line belt, practical things that students they don't need to be trained or they already come with the skills. Mm. So that saves a lot of time for the employers. So they're just developing their skills rather than learning from scratch, although there's probably some things. Yeah. Correct, correct. So I would say uh, developing slash assigning their skills mm. to do particular tasks where the employers, you know, already know what they want to achieve, what are the outcomes, what are the what is the budget? We just need the people. And that is the beautiful opportunity that we have here. I know, Tal, that you've been really driving uh, the preparation for this work placement, you know, given that Marine has never happened before, we're the pioneers. So um, how's your team gone in preparing and getting ready for this launch? Look, um, the good news for all your employees outside, uh, the process is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basically all you will need to do as a business partner is to uh, fill up a very small application. We contact you once we receive your application, um, after we understand your business needs and, and your vision and what is it that you want to drive through your business forward, uh, then we can look on the students that we have that will um, suit of course, be suitable for your project. That's it. It's a very, very, very simple process. So it's very much about us collaborating uh, not leaving people on their own. And further to that, I'd like to now cross to Carmel Guy. Carmel is our compliance um, industry insurance person who gives us all the advice that we need. And she's going to further what you've talked about, Tal, in terms of not being afraid to take people on for work placement because we have it all sorted. All right. Hi Carmel, thanks for joining me. Such a beautiful sunset. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's it's all right. right. It's gorgeous. I arranged this just for you. I know, so picturesque. <laughs> so you're the compliance guru for Envirotech. Yes. Do you want to tell us a bit about what that means? Sure. Um, well, I work with Envirotech, um, helping them with their clients and their quality and navigating all the complexities of regulated environment that we work in. So at the moment, Envirotech is embarking upon their first work placement program for our amazing marine course. And I know that there would be a lot of industry, there'd be a lot of people who are a bit worried about having students. What can you tell them to assure them that it's a wonderful opportunity and there's nothing to worry about? Well, when the students go out to industry or to a workplace as part of their work placement arrangements, they do so with Envirotech's insurance policies in place. Envirotech as an RTO needs to hold those insurance policies to cover those arrangements. So they'll have um, public liability insurance and also work cover Queensland insurance. So that assures the employer that they're sufficiently um, insured against any event that might happen. Okay, so if I'm going as a student and Envirotech are insuring me, 
okay, in terms of the industry I'm going into. And what if I damage a really expensive piece of equipment, hopefully not, with the industry people I'm working for, yeah. you know? Well, hopefully that won't happen, but um, in the event that something like that does occur, something is damaged um, belonging to the employer, the public liability insurance um, potentially will cover that event. So when uh, the uh, student comes to you as the employer for their work placement, they will come with an agreement that will lay out all the terms and conditions and they'll come with an information pack where you can read up more details on um, what's covered, what the insurance de um, details and what they need to know essentially to be able to take on the student in the workplace. So if I haven't taken on a student before or I'm reading the documents because you know that's why you're the compliance guru, some of those documents are hard to understand. Yeah, yeah. If I didn't understand something, can I can I contact Envirotech yeah. and have it clarified? Most certainly. Um, contact the Envirotech Vocational Placement Coordinator. Um, those details will be provided in the information that you receive. And just talk through any of your concerns beforehand. Um, you get a, a self-assessment checklist um, and some information before you uh, take on your student and you work through all of that to determine that you've got the appropriate facilities and the right uh, equipment range of work to take on a student and give them that learning opportunity. So it's just a matter of um, making sure that you read through all that information and that you can confirm that you know you have um, everything that you need to have in the workplace to be able to provide that opportunity. Um, and of course we do a risk assessment and we make sure everything's in place before um, we send the student out. So you're not just sending the student, you're actually working with the industry beforehand right. and throughout the placement exactly. so that everybody can be you know, self-assured that everything's going to be okay. Yeah, it's very much a partnership. So we don't just send them out and leave them to their home devices. Um, you get your contact person and we um, make sure that we check at regular intervals to see that everything's going okay with the placement and that the employer's happy, the student's happy, everybody's happy and it's working well. Right. Well, one more thing because, you know, sometimes I happen to, like, uh, trip over, break my ankle. Um, if I was in the workplace and I'm doing something and I fall and let's say I, let's say I break my leg, uh, is that going to cost the employer to send them to the hospital and get it fixed or are they going to be in trouble because it happened? No. Um, when a student comes out to workplace under vacation placement arrangements, Envirotech will have the work cover Queensland insurance in place to protect the student if they are injured that will cover them for any um, costs uh, any medical expenses etc so all you need to do is if something unfortunate does happen just use your normal workplace uh, accident uh, processes and contact Envirotech's vocational placement coordinator let them know what's occurred and um, they will give you the information on what to do in relation to the work cover and the claims and everything that has to happen after that but the students definitely protected. Right. So obviously I've discussed extreme examples yeah. because we know that there's people who get nervous, but what, what would you say about taking on a marine student for industry placement? I would say that, you know, in doing so, you're providing the students and potential future employees with valuable opportunity for their learning and for their assessment and to give them that exposure in the workplace that they can't get anywhere else so you know you're benefiting the industry you're also benefiting the community by giving them those opportunities you're also giving your employees and your supervisors in particular a chance to pass on their knowledge mm. and to contribute to um, teaching the future of the workforce so I think everyone benefits all around yeah okay that's amazing thank you for your time I no we'll really appreciate it no problem Oh, no back. need to worry. Oh, Scott, <laughs> where did you go? Very far away, of course. Wasn't watching from the back. Down, to the, <laughs> down to the ocean. Um, it was great to hear Carmel with all that confidence about mm -hmm. the fact that people are definitely covered. There's no need to worry. Yep. And that once again, like what Tal was saying, we're going to collaborate and work with you. So please reach out. We really, really want to hear from you. Definitely. So you can see we've, we've been focusing on streamlining these processes, making sure that all the boxes are checked. We want things to be as simple as possible for businesses, organizations, and industry representatives 
easy for our students and easy for us as an institution as well. So it's we worked really hard on that yeah. and we're, we're going to continue to, to evolve um, as we connect and engage with, with more people. Also, for those who do live around the area, you may have noticed the beautiful rainbow lorikeets in the background of that audio, which is one of my favourite parts, <laughs> hearing them. And it's about time for the lorikeets right now, actually, 4.30 here. But you got to spend some time outside, Paula, which seemed beautiful. Oh, it was sunset. Oh, it was a really hard day at the office, sunset I can tell and you. Sunset compliance. Oh, mm. Yeah, it went beautifully. <laughs> beautifully. Who said compliance was boring? Yeah. Um, Scott, I realise that you have been a marine student. Mm -hmm. You're now a marine trainer of students. So uh, can we have a bit of input from you about why you think work placement would be valuable for students? Yeah, yeah definitely. So we've spent a lot of time in the classrooms, what kind of theory, understanding, you know, and developing our knowledge, but actually being able to get out into the field and to connect with people that are working in these spaces to actually connect with the elements, to connect with all the animals and, you know, in, in, in terms of marine, like with the sand dunes, the rocky shores, mm. the coral reefs, the mudflats, the mangroves, everything is just so crucial to deepen your connection, one, with nature mm -hmm. and to expand your network. What I found uh, over my years of studying and, and volunteering and internships was it was so beneficial um, to meet other people mm -hmm. and to build those connections and networks. It's those networks and the opportunities through connecting with people that have opened most of the doors in my life. So mm -hmm. I can't understate for people interested in the marine space and in the environmental field, yes, the knowledge is super important, but I found it's about who you know as well, in addition to what you know. And with this marine, um, with our vocational placement program, we're connecting people with industry and bridging that gap because I didn't do a formal placement program throughout mm -hmm. my science degree, mm -hmm. but throughout my studies, I sort of put myself out there. I emailed people, I connected with people mm -hmm. and just engaged and connected. So And industry who connect with us and come on board, they're going to be the pioneers. Like this hasn't yeah. happened before. Yeah, you know, it's these, super powerful. And it's part of not just something on the Gold Coast. It's something that is national, that's mm. international. It's just, it gets me buzzing and I so feel it. I feel it. The, 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 the passion, <laughs> yes. the vision, yes. the, the contribution to change, the environmental protection, restoration, everything. We need these, these transformations of culture and our society and the, a different way in terms of how the government's operating mm. and how industry is operating. Mm. So, yeah, we want that together. government to come on board. I know that they're excited and they're keen and they want to they want to help us because they also want to help all the habitats. Just one more thing, Scott. Um, I know you did a lot of volunteering yep. and I, I know how valuable volunteering is mm. and we're encouraging our students to volunteer, but we want to go one step further. We don't want them to just volunteer. We really want them to have work placement. Why do you think that that push is better than just volunteering alone? I'd say with with the, the opportunities that are going to be created within different businesses and organisations, they know what is needed for their current operations, mm -hmm. right? So it's very heavily focused on skills and using that um, you know, people's time and energy and current level of awareness mm -hmm. and qualifications to, to contribute more. So mm. it's a tricky question. That's some form of an answer, but um, something else that, that comes to mind is that it's not just spending a few hours, uh, you know, somewhere every once in a while. There's intention there. Mm. There is a desire to support yeah. existing projects, to create new projects, and the, in the, the, the partners that we're going to be getting on board, our students can slot straight into existing mm. processes. So it's really flows. about building an army, an army who can go and, you know, conquer this, this issue that we're having in the world yeah. and to protect this, you know, precious gift. Mm. Um, and also, you know, to be able to learn even more about working as a team. And obviously when you're in a workplace, 
I suppose what I'm trying to say, if you go and volunteer, you go out, you volunteer, it's all happy, chappy, da, da, da. Mm. You go into a workplace, there are particular stresses and things that you have to learn to deal with. So it is different. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, you know, we'll be we're looking at uh, arrangements and agreements with our students and, and partners moving forward, which clearly lay out what's expected, mm. for example. And it's also, it's, it's more formal rather yes. than informal volunteering yes. where, you know, it's, yeah, which is a lot less formal, but you know, volunteering opportunities, you know, formal work placement, industry programs, all and, of these opportunities mm, create to upskilling and supporting projects. And on that, Scott, mm, that means they get to add it to their CV. How many people have you definitely. interviewed for a job where you ask them what experience they've had? And it's like, well, when I was at uni, I did this. Mm. but they hadn't actually been out. So this yeah. enables students. I wanted to make sure I wasn't that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I had a, I scored a, a job working up at North Stradbroke Island yeah. with the University of Queensland in my honours year. Wow. And that came about through talking with people and yeah. just connecting with other human beings mm. who are passionate to find out what exists out in the world. Mm. So everything that you feel like you want to explore in, in your lives, do it, explore it, lean in, connect, find out more, and you don't know where you're going to end up in the world and what impact you're actually going to have. So We're really grateful for the industry who have come on board already, offering work placement for our inaugural graduates who will graduate in July. Um, and what we'd like to do now is cross over to some of those industries who have agreed so that you can hear what they have to offer, what they're thinking, and therefore you can see that it is really a, a great opportunity. I nearly said amazing. Yeah. It is really a great opportunity and we would like you to get in contact with us. So we're going to firstly look at David Lennon. Whilst David works for us and we're very blessed to have David, uh, he also has his own company, Sustainable Oceans, and let's hear what he has to offer. As well as working in Virotech, I've got my own consultancy since 2007 called Sustainable Oceans International, which is a consultancy that's dedicated to advancing artificial reef design, artificial reefs for impact mitigation, reef restoration, mitigating dredging impacts, for example. We've worked in a number of different countries. We've conducted a number of coal relocations, for example, saving coals that are in peril due to dredging activities, moving them out of the way into a safe location. We've advanced a lot of new artificial reef building techniques and pioneering new materials. We are the first in the world to use a construction size 3D printer. We're in the Guinness Book of Records for that. Um, that's quite exciting new technology that's getting better and better every year and something that we're continuing um, working with and advancing the use of 3D print. And our goal is to build reefs that look like natural reefs. So you don't even know they're man-made after six months. They blend in and they work and they function um, as good or better than a natural reef. It's part of our philosophy and part of our drive to um, for mitigation and restoration techniques. We believe nature deserves that respect. There's enough man-made objects in the ocean as it is. So that's one of the things that I do through Sustainable Oceans International. But another exciting concept that we're rolling out through Envirotech is reef CPR, which is literally first aid that recreational divers can use. It's actually for the reef. So it's just like CPR is the first aid that you use when you come across a damaged coal, for example. And it's giving the tool to all the recreational divers out there. Because let's face it, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of recreational divers that are diving around on reefs. And some of those are actually causing some of the damage that needs to be repaired. And I know most divers are motivated to repair any damage that they come across and they get very frustrated at seeing toppled corals or corals are being flipped over by a storm or an anchor chain or plastic or fishing line wrapped around corals or fishing nets wrapped around corals and they want to do something about it but they don't have the knowledge and the skills to do it so that's where we're partnering with Envirotech to roll out the reef CPR program through the students and through the dive centers and that's where we run a program educating them on the 10 different steps involved in helping save a coal. And REAP CPR, the CPR stands for three key steps. Those first, first aid response when you come across something. So the C, the C in CPR 
stands for control the cause of the impact. So first up, when we get to a damaged site, we want to control what's causing the impact. P stands for preparing the substrate for natural recovery, because nature is just absolutely fantastic at natural recovery by itself in most cases. So once you've controlled what was causing the impact to the coral reef, then you can prepare the substrate for natural recolonization. You got R, which is your replanting. So that's where you use everything from coral nurseries, coral, um, coral relocations to replant the area with corals, reintroduce corals into that area. And there might be hardier corals too, for example. So there's your C, P and R, the three key steps that we use in reef CPR. And this is something that the students are getting involved in and having those skills and those knowledge to do when they're out there in the workforce and introducing reef CPR to other dive centers that they might be working at, for example. And we also run projects. For example, we're running trips to, to Bali where we've been helping out the North Bali Reef Conservation guys who are doing a fantastic job on the north side of Bali. Um, we've been taking divers from Australia and running them through a 10-day reef CPR course where they get to actually save corals and actually rebuild reefs. And ultimately, what we're looking to do, a group of people that are reef CPR trained, so when there's that storm event or ship grounding, we can mobilize an army of trained people that can go to the site and rescue corals that otherwise would die. There's a lot of motivated divers, a lot of motivated students that would want to do that. And we can call them up and organize such trips during a, you know, a catastrophic event of some type. There's plenty of damage that's happening out there on the reefs as it is in the high use areas that reef CPR can help. So that's an introduction to SOI and reef CPR that the students are getting involved in and playing a key role in helping promote and conduct around the world. Especially when COVID's finished up, we'll be able to fly again and get involved in international projects because um, we've got a lot of interest and a lot of demand overseas, especially in the Middle East. But of course, at the moment, we can't get there. So if you need any more information, feel free to talk to me about it or talk to one of our students and they'll happily tell you all about it. Thank you very much. And we're back. So Mr. Lennon and his wonderful Reef CPR project, how wonderful is that? It's, you know, taking uh, a principle that most of us are aware of, first aid, you know, basic life support, mm -hmm. and, and applying that to the natural environment. And you know what? That's exactly what nature is providing for us. We're part of a beautiful interconnect, interconnected, interrelated earth community. And without having, having healthy functional ecosystems, our health would struggle as well. Um, so, you know, looking at all these initiatives and projects that are protecting, defending and restoring the natural environment, one, it can be done for, for the sake of nature itself, but also for our, for our benefit and our mm. health as well in, in the long run. Yeah, when I heard David's program was called CPR, I, I just thought, wow, that's a really, really clever name mm. because the first thing I thought about was, you know, if you're in a dangerous situation, you really want to know, does someone there know CPR? You know? Yeah. And so then you think about it in terms of the ocean, you go, oh, is it defibrillator? Boom, bring the ocean bring back the to life. life. Back. That's yeah, it. You know, the and the tools he's created to be able to do that. I, I just think, yeah, we've gone from the medical world with us and now we're going to the ocean and, and doing yeah. the same type of thing. Yeah. I'd just like to mention we have had a lot of um, interest coming in about our course and the, and the costs of the course. I just wanted to let you know that given that it's the end of the financial year coming up, we have some special prices. So please contact Envirotech and our sales team will be able to talk you through that. Who have we got next? Who have we got next? We are heading back up further north mm. um, and we'll be hearing from one of our industry partners. Uh, we'll be hearing from Dan Beard from Inlock. Yes, and Inlock have been 
instrumental with us from the beginning. And they, together with Blue Planet, actually applied to the government for us to get funding because they could see how crucial this course mm. is and that it is put in as a critical skills. We're still waiting to hear. We're hopeful. Things are flowing. Yeah, things, things, flowing. things will happen. We know that's going to happen. So we're very grateful to them. Um, I spent some time with Peter. Peter actually works over in Vanuatu um, and in lock means in location. And he was visiting, so he came and watched some of our classes. When I went up north to speak to um, the schools and industry up there, I got to meet with um, David. We have lots of Davids. Yeah. We got to meet with David. He He's great. And he was telling me all about their COTS program. Um, Crown of Thorns. The Crown, Crown of, of Thorns. Thorns. Yes. COTS, little marine lingo. Yes. And how, <laughs> I'll just let you know this, the fact that the, the reason the COTS are a problem mm. now is not that they didn't exist before, but they've become, they've populated so much mm. that they're endangering our reef. Mm. And I believe part of the reason is because of abiotic factors. To some extent, yeah, we've got all of these, um, all of these, I remember studying some of the hypotheses as to why we have these crown of thorns blooms. And I'm mm. sure the Inlock crew could elaborate on this a lot mm. more. But yeah, as a result of um, uh, both natural fluctuations in the environment, and also human interference from things like runoff, for example. Mm. There's so many links in these systems that can destabilize, you know, the the natural balance and flow. Mm. So, mm. let's, so they're um, doing great work, and they've got some um, uh, phenomenal experiences. That some of our students, there's obviously mm. particular qualifications you have to have, mm. but some of our students will be able to have some work placement there. So let's hear about this exciting opportunity from yeah. Dan. And some more opportunities around around the, the Queensland coast. Yes. And this is, you know, we've shown you and we've heard from uh, only a small selection Tiny. of industry representatives and organisations today. There are thousands out there. Mm. So think expansively when it Go comes big. to the, you know your careers and the environment and marine and the world is literally your oyster just go explore over to dan over to dan hello my name is daniel beard and i run the cairns based crown of thorn starfish control program for Imlock. this program has been operating for around 10 years through uh, the management of the reef and rainforest research center and the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority, as well as some other government agencies. As well as that, we run a range of training program in Papua New Guinea. Uh, this program has around 180 rangers that we employ that deliver on the ground support work within their communities. And we train them in all things from water sanitation, hygiene, building construction, uh, farming. So my program based in Cairns employs around 40 staff. Uh, both male, female, indigenous, and single Saxon. We have around 10 divers on each vessel, uh, as well as a skipper, supervisor, and team leaders. They sleep around 18 people and operate between Wizard Island and the Wind Sundays. In that area, we work on approximately 130 reefs uh, and we undertake surveillance and culling activities. A voyage or a deployment for a Crown of Thorn Starfish program is approximately 10 days. During this time, the vessel will not return to sea. So once you're on board, you're on board. The only reason we'll come back is for a medical emergency or uh, if we're kicking someone off the boat. We're often in very remote areas of Northern Australia. So this means limited phone reception, limited uh, contact with land. So these should all be considerations when you're applying for a position on the Crown of Thorn Starfish. So all of my staff uh, on the Crown of Thorns um, program all have a minimum of a dive master qualification as well as uh, first aid, oxygen provider and advanced resuscitation and an occupational dive medical. So to be considered for a position on the boats, you must have these and be able to maintain them going forward. So when a new diver comes on board our program, we have uh, two trial trips and um, these trial trips uh, allow the supervisors and the skippers, as well as the team leaders and the rest of the crew to evaluate a new staff based on several factors. These can include safety, ability to perform the tasks and roles that are uh, expected of them, but also things such as how much effort they put in, the way that they get along with the rest of the crew. Uh, that is a really big part of this. So our staff range between around 18 and 45 years old, with the majority of them at that younger end of that scale. 
Uh, so again, bear this in mind if you are applying for these positions. As a diver on the COPS control program, you get to see some amazing things on the reef, as well as learn a lot about uh, working and operating on a vessel. Um, so our program not only allows you to get in the water, but also jump on board the tools on the boat and make sure that the vessel is maintained um, and seaworthy at all times. There's some amazing spots that they get to visit. Some of those include um, the ribbon reefs, as well as down south around Wheeler and a lot of the tourist reefs um, in between. So most recently, some of our divers saw dugongs that are along the coast here, um, near Cairns, uh, as well as minke whales um, during the season uh, and can often hear humpbacks uh, during their dives. I know that there are many students who are super excited about an opportunity to go out on a boat for mm. 10 days, you know, and help with the culling of the cots. I have to tell you, I couldn't think of anything worse being out on a boat for 10 days. And I think, like you said, you have to be a particular type of person. Obviously, you need the higher qualifications in diving mm. and you have to be able to work as a team which is part of the reason we've been talking about how we will work with industry. We won't just send anyone, yeah. but I'm sure you'd love to be out for 10 days. Oh, for sure. I, I personally wouldn't be involved with a program like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely see so much value in, in those bigger trips, right? Where we've got, you're spending time out in the field, you're connecting with other people, you, you're doing a big trip. That was almost the most sought after projects I wanted to find myself on, whether getting out on a boat and getting out on the reef for like a week or two, you know. Mm. Um, so one thing we've spoken about diving a fair bit and we're going to talk about diving a bit more in just We a are, but can I interrupt for one of second? Course. Just because some people might think that this course is all about diving mm. and it's not. Obviously, diving is an amazing experience and it allows you to do particular aspects, yeah. but there are other aspects of marine for those who aren't interested in diving. Mm. So with the seagrass and the mangroves, it, you know, it doesn't have to be. If you're someone who thinks, oh, I really want to do it, but I don't want to dive, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, definitely. There's there's so many projects you can get involved with. I would personally advocate if you're able to, you mm. know, to get trained, get get your qualifications, because once you're a scuba diver, you're a scuba diver for life. And you I, can I would explore encourage. the oceans mm. everywhere. Um, so now we're actually going to go to Gold Coast Dive Centre yes. and hear from uh, Lewis and he's going to give us another industry pitch and talk a bit about the programs they've offered and also share his vision um, about how he would like to see a positive difference for the, for the mm. marine world and our oceans. And we're very grateful to Gold Coast Dive Centre. They've been working very closely with us and the beautiful mm, Maria. Maria. Maria, Maria we crew, love Maria. We love all the crew. Yes. It's a vibe down there. It it's is. so fantastic. It is. And on the last dive I did with them at Cook Island, I saw, we saw a humpback whale on the way back. Mm. One of the biggest turtles I've ever seen oh, underwater. Aren't the turtles are amazing. Sharks. I swam All with them. Harold the turtle. Yeah, Harry, yeah. Hazza. He was, he's amazing. Probably Hazza the green turtle, the green yeah, turtle. I don't, know. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's hear from Luis. My name is Luis. I'm the founder of the Gold Coast Life Center. We opened doors close to seven years ago. And then we still running strong and with a lot of passion. So, so that's us. The initial idea of the Gold Coast Dive Center, it was very simple. It was to get people near or close to the ocean to understand how the ocean works and then develop a skill that you can actually jump on the water and absorb that knowledge and experience and then understand it. Therefore, you can actually do something to protect it. So that was that was the initial and still the idea, the mission of the Gold Coast Dive Center. So we got different programs. Obviously, we are uh, specialized in teaching people how to dive and how to become a instructors, professionals within the field, so they can deliver the message to a new generation. So the change doesn't stop. So what we're doing is basically we got certificate three, four, and diploma based on on leadership, and then, but it's all aquatic and it's all related to the ocean. 
Well, I think um, apart from the uh, the actual skills to teach scuba diving, which is, is a different field altogether, I think one of the skills that is more important for all of us to develop is, um, and, and, and these days, is to approach and be able to communicate to other people, in this case, students, on a different range of levels. So you need to have the skill that the message gets equally Educate that person why they shouldn't use that plastic, it will be the solution. We need to be proactive more than reactive. So we need to change those two concepts so we don't react to anything. We're just being proactive so that doesn't happen. In the ocean is the only place that we all speak the same language. It doesn't matter who you are or you, where you're coming from, it doesn't matter you're Asian, American, South American, European. Under the water there is no accent. They, everybody speaks the same language. And the activity is just a bonus. There is no politics under the water. There is no religion under the water. It's just people communicating very simple and then doing one thing together. And that is possibly the most beautiful thing. And there is a bunch of lists that you can list if you want to be politically correct, you know, whatever. But that one there, I reckon that's the best message. Basically, it will be to keep the ocean's clean. That's a, an ocean. It's, it's, it's a place where we we enjoy. We take people. We make business. So, if you want to talk about a real physical, you know, measurable goal, that will be that. You know, keep everything nice and clean, so it can be used and enjoyed for the people. And you create an industry, and you create an economy, and you create jobs, and jobs they create more economy. So this activity by far, it does that, you know, so this is a win-win situation for them, for the environment, for the industry, there is no losers here. Wonderful. Okay, so I just firstly um, love the vision that Lewis was painted, you know, that connectivity, that bringing people together, ensuring that we connect people with the skills and the passion all together to make a difference. And whenever I see footage of the dolphins, the turtles, the whale sharks mm. all around those people, mm. like this is so much of this work is done for their sake, mm. for, for these for these animals, for the natural environment yeah. to to create a, a better, healthier life for them. You know. Yeah, I had some people ask me about you know in the course are we you know doing stuff with the marine animals, and I said, well, this particular course is focused on habitats and the reason it's focused on habitats it's pointless going and helping a sick whale if the habitat they're going back into is not healthy mm. because they're never going to stay healthy mm. and so that's why we have that focus here i've seen you know unfortunately more more recent more more, more, more i suppose more recently but finding the the how prolific, you know, plastics have become. Mm. We're finding now, you know, whales that are ingesting plastic, corals. I've seen some studies. The corals are starting yeah. to eat plastic. Yeah, Inlock were telling so, me they have. Yeah, yeah, it's really crazy. So yeah, we need to we need to focus on the health and well-being of individual species. We need to look mm. at an ecosystem level, but realize that all the environments on this planet are all interconnected, and we need to continue to persevere and persist in the ways that resonate for us with our skills and our passion. Mm contribute to change in different ways because collectively we get things done and that's how we can move forward. Yeah, and in terms of diving and the course, we have um, many people diving, this was their first experience and so they um, obtained their open water qualification. Yep. But we have so many people who come in who are much higher than that. Dive Even masters, as, yeah, we got commercial divers. Commercial divers. Yeah, so anyone, anyone, whether you've dived or you haven't or you have the most extensive. Yeah. Yeah. we're here for you and yeah. you obviously love the ocean so come and you know learn about it and work with us and those in industry who are divers you know contact us mm. let us work with you with industry all right now now so i believe you recently uh went up to northern gold coast and had a wonderful chat um I did. with steve i did steve from jacob's well environmental oh. center Perfect. it was very eye-opening and he's offering some great stuff for our students in terms of work placement. Sounds and he's great. very excited. I'd be very keen to go and, uh, and meet him and, yeah. and check out the facility mm. soon as well. It really sounds great. Yeah, he's a great guy. It's a great place. Great. Great. So much great. Great. Better than amazing. <laughs> 
Okay, let's have a listen. Go to a great video. Go to Steve. Steve, do you want to just give us a brief outline of the purpose of this educational centre? We're a government education facility, so we're we're a school. We're able to give the students back at the end of the day, so that's <laughs> that, which is which is good and bad. But we do things here that you can't do within regular schools. Mm -hmm. So we've got specialist facilities and resources that you mightn't have in a school. For example, we have our boat. Uh, which not every school can afford. Mm -hmm. So we share it and we become a campus of all our local schools so they can come and access all our resources. Our whole system revolves around good quality staff and good resources. Most of our programs are centered on sustainability and biodiversity. And sustainability is an easy one to talk about with students while they're here. Biodiversity, we use marine habitats as, as the theme. So we could be out in our boat doing seagrass. Mm -hmm. We could be in the mangroves, uh, settlement plates underwater. But then again, we could be in the forest as well. So we use the habitat as our, what we call pedagogy, our place of learning. And that is the theme. And all the curriculum is centered around that because we have to make sure that all, all curriculum links for all age groups from P to 12, uh, within a particular subject area that we're doing, if it's biology, are met within our programs. Because we are Education Queensland, we have yeah. to do it that way. Um, it's not really a place where you just come and go, hey, let's have a holiday. Yeah. <laughs> we, like to, we like the kids to go away thinking that they've had a holiday and they've been educated. We were teaching um, year, what they, first year marine biology students just recently. Mm -hmm. So they were tertiary students and and every one of them had a different direction they were going to go in. And we were talking to them about the education side of things because we're, we're in the education side. Some of my staff have come from other industries. Yeah. Some of them have come from the fishing industry. Some of them have come from the tourist industry. Uh, what sort of work placement opportunities do you believe that Jacob's well could, could offer? Mm. Well, one, our boat. So you're going to get lots of sea time. Yeah. Uh, you'll learn about the workings of the boat as well, the maintenance as well. On the boat and then our programs whichever programs are going at the time it could be a trawl where we're looking at adaptations of certain organisms we pick up off the bottom we could be in the mangroves where we're looking at mangrove systems mm -hmm. um, we could be diving and a uh, rock wall and we'll be looking at settlement and sessile animals and we're looking at sea grasses and so all those different habitats we're looking at so you'll learn that Plus, you'll be learning how to work in a team because we have to We have to work in it. It just doesn't work if yeah. we don't all get on. But then we have little extras that they might want to pick up on, like ropes courses. Uh, we'll be propagating. We've got a nursery, so we might be able to propagate certain things. And I know there's a lot of interest in seagrass mm. and mangrove prop propagations. So we could be doing that as well. So um, really, there's. it depends on the time of the year, yeah. depends on what's in our calendar mm. and what our client schools want mm. to what the person who comes in to do placement gets. Yeah, yeah. so I can see that they'd be getting a lot of variety. Yes. What's the advantage for you, um, having looked at our course, that you're actually going to have people coming in who know this hands-on skills? Oh, they'll be, they'll be able to value add to the information that we're already giving. Um, sometimes you, I can be talking to kids till I'm blue in the face and they're just looking at you, but it just takes one other person who sees a different perspective to make a few comments and they go, oh, that's what he means. Mm -hmm. So having two or three people doing, saying it different ways is really good, all right? Um, also, the confidence of us leaving that person with a group mm -hmm. would be really good because we know that they have the knowledge. Yeah. And I'm sure because they're mature age, because we get a, we do get a lot of practical teaching students come in. Yes. Um, and I'm assuming that mature age students are going to be a little bit, um, oh, well, I'd say all the time, but a little bit better with the students as mm. well. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So finally on the work placement, why do you think other industries should engage in work placement? Like what, what's the value for students and oh, future employers? It, you can work out of a textbook. And I suppose this is the way we teach. It's live the, live the learning is our motto here. Mm. So you can teach in a, in a classroom out of a textbook, but still not get the understanding until you go and actually do it. Mm. So having hands-on practical experience, even with the teachers these days, 
learning about teaching practice within a, within the classroom, you know, it, it doesn't meet every criteria. You go out and actually do it and get in the real world and then you know, wow, hey, that, oh, I've got to pick up this, I've got to learn this, I've got to learn that. That's where it comes with the practical experience. Mm. I think that hands-on learning, there's not enough of it these days. Yeah, yeah. I agree. And mm. I think that's what's amazing about our course. And even though they've, they've um, learnt the skills and they've been out in the real world, to then apply it in a work placement, yes. like you say, yeah. being in a real work environment as opposed to being in the safety network of other students and your teachers really amps up what yeah. they need to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm really excited about collaborating yeah, it'd be with you great. guys and, and, and the, doing. It's a win-win really for us. Um, there's, there's, for us, we have practical students here quite a bit and they follow. But then once they get to know what's going on, they assist. Mm. And then we put them in charge of things as mm. well. It's great to have someone else on the same wavelength as us teaching with us, yeah. team teaching. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Thank you so much. No worries. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm a student at Envirotech. I'm studying marine habitat conservation and restoration. <laughs> I hit the wrong We're button. Back. I'm sorry. We're back. So that was that was so great. Uh, I haven't been up there personally, but geez, looks like there's so much so much to offer mm -hmm. up at the education centre. Um, and we're looking forward to placing our students up there with Steve and getting them involved in so many different things, right? Yeah, and apart from the marine, one thing that I found really fascinating when I was there, there were because they um it's a Queensland education and they have students from P to 12 as well as you know university and teachers and they had this young group of kids I think they were grade three they're all covered in mud because they'd just gone to the mangroves and they're ho hosing them off yeah, they're <laughs> they're muddy hands. anyway then they were walking into the forest because they have a forest there and they're all holding like these little iPads mm. and I was like what's going on and the teacher had this I don't know like a big probe that mm. they hold up into the trees and then the students can see whatever animals they can see up wow. there on the screen and then they can teach That's them about cool. it. How cool. I haven't seen one of them before. Me either. That's Me either. Sweet. Yeah. And you got you also got to hang out with some other other beings, some <gasps> other creatures, the lizards, the turtles. A little turtle. Yeah. Forty five years old he was. Wow. Mm, amazing. That's old. I know. It's old turtle. Yeah, I know. I I was gonna say he's as older than me, but no. he's not. Mm. So did you play with that? Did you play with the python? No, or the other? No, no, no. I did touch the snake. I psyched myself up when his head was in the box. I went, okay, I'll give him a little touch. But oh gosh, thank goodness I didn't hold him. Mm. It, pretty it's, cool head. No, it's just. <laughs> um, I know people love snakes. I know Shelley loves mm. snakes, but I don't know. I just have a bit of Maybe a fear. Maybe, but you know, the I held the blue tongue and the pink tongue lizard. Yeah, I heard about that pink tongue lizard. I know, I didn't know they had one. That's funky ass. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> like, you know, male, female, blue, pink. Mm. So, How about we listen to one of our students yeah, now? Yeah, that sounds yeah? great. So um, we're going to hear from Susie James, who is one of very dedicated, passionate, enthusiastic uh, and active students here at Envirotech. Um, and she's going to be sharing some of her experiences and her perspectives. Um, so and let's... given she's one of our first graduates, we thought, you know, what better way, someone who's been nearly through the whole course. So let's hear yeah, Susie. Yeah, exactly. Hi, I'm Susie. I'm a student at Envirotech. I'm studying marine habitat conservation and restoration. And I'm just here to share with you the experiences that I have uh, since I started my course. I've been volunteering at two wonderful organisations. One is called um, Reef Check Australia, branch that's based in southeast Queensland. And the other organisation that I'm volunteering with is Seabird Rescue in Ballina. So both of these volunteering opportunities I uh, started when I began my course. And I realised how wonderful it is to be able to use the knowledge and experience that I have through my course in order to be able to share this with the two wonderful organisations. So with Reef Check Australia, basically they do a lot of surveys throughout Australia, throughout the Great Barrier Reef. It's a charity and um, they're always looking for volunteers. So um, they do train the volunteers. I've become a Reef Check ambassador 
And so what that means is that when there's festivals or events, things like that, we as Reef Check ambassadors, we set up stalls in these areas and we educate public about what they can do on a daily basis to help restore or conserve the reef. With Seabird Rescue, we rescue seabirds, obviously, uh, sea turtles and sea snakes. So it's uh, quite sad when we see how sick they are when they come into the hospital, but it's so satisfying to look after them. So I volunteer with them once a week and I have been for many months now since I started my course. We look after the turtles. Uh, sometimes they come in with plastic ingestion or a parasite infestation or sometimes even massive injuries from propellers, boat propellers on their carapace. So we care for them as long as it's necessary uh, until that beautiful day we can actually release them back into the ocean, which is such an incredible feeling. Uh, so that is a wonderful opportunity to get involved as a volunteer and to also grant, gain wonderful work experience through them. Both organisations are fantastic to be involved with the marine world and not only gaining work experience but also networking with people and getting to know, you know, what are the opportunities out there for us as students from our marine course and how we can get involved with different organisations and it's always about networking and, and finding out where we can fit in. So for myself and possibly for other students as well, we are so willing to go anywhere in Australia to be able to have our work placement opportunities. So anywhere in the week Sundays or up in Queensland, anywhere that we can help and share our passion and our knowledge in the restoration and conservation of our beautiful oceans. We come already prepared, passionate and ready to work. So please give us that opportunity and give us a chance to show you what we can do. So I look forward to the future and to our work placement opportunities to see where we can get involved and share our passion with those who are already out there. Thank you. Great to hear from Susie. Mm. You um, know that Susie was actually a um, a steward. What do you call them? Airlines? Flight attendant. Flight attendant is mm. a new word, politically correct. She was a flight attendant for 25 years. And then with COVID, she lost her job, as so many people did, unfortunately. Mm. And so then she decided to go with something that was her passion and had mm. always been her passion. So Powerful. she started, like, you know, Googling on the computer and she found our course meant to be. It. And she's been dedicated and excited and passionate ever since. So wonderful to hear. Mm -hmm. And people actually choosing to lean into and follow what their heart's mm -hmm. telling them and, you know, following their passions. And um, we all must be, you know, if, if we're living a life like that, it's going to change the world and our own our own lives and well-being. So you got to see some of the opportunities that Susie's been involved with, some of the organisations that she has volunteered with. As you can see, there's so much out there, and for for people who want to work on, you know, ha hand like hands on with mm. with wildlife, for example, um, like the seabird rescue place mm. down in Northern Rivers. Mm. There's so many places where you can get really, really hands on. Yeah, and Susie really, really, really is so excited about work placement. Yeah. She started doing some research herself about different industries she'd mm. like to work with. Uh, to build up her CV yeah. so that she can, you know, have a job where she works with Marine, which yeah. is what she really wants. I think that uh, to finish up before you and I have a little we'll take up. to take, uh, we'll cross to Shelley, our CEO, yep. and she's just going to give a call to action. Thank you so much for participating in our event. I wish to conclude this webinar with a call for the Indigenous communities. Indigenous marine communities and industries, we are asking for your help. Please support our extensive efforts to offer the Australian vocational environmental products you are destined to the marine employers, Indigenous elders, youth and females, First Nation environmental leaders. Together we can voice and deliver that marine protection skills are critical to coastal and islander communities and require the same funded training opportunities 
as arbitrators in each Australian state. With your endorsement and collaboration, we will enable the first national marine protection practical traineeships, apprenticeships and professional jobs made available for this engaged youth and any member of the community. The slogan of this course is Marine Biology for the Fishermen. At the end of the webinar, we invite Indigenous coastal communities wanting to take part in marine protection accreditation and empowerment of local marine protection jobs to contact us. This week, we invite Indigenous communities to submit with us joint strategic funding proposals for your community youth and fishermen for marine vocational training and new job creation. It is possible to create new marine protection jobs for long-term marine employment and to generate new sustainable income for your communities. There is no better day to make such a commitment for a new marine story connecting people with their places, with new prospects of sustainable industries that will not depend on continuous government funding, but instead will rely on professionally caring for our ocean's environment. Thank you and happy World Ocean Day. Okay, um, I've just been given a few questions here. So from some of our students, um, can students, oh sorry, I'm, just, I'm getting tired. Some questions that have come through online from our wonderful viewers. So can mm. students select a preference for where their work placements are undertaken, i.e. in the field or office? So certainly um, we understand, and as we heard, Tiffany was involved in a lot of research. So some of the work will, will take place in an office. Obviously you go out in the field as well. And then there are those jobs that are predominantly in the field. In terms of can you go where you want to? The simple answer is yes, you can, and you can make contact yourself. However, we will have to work in partnership with that particular industry mm. because as we spoke about before with insurance and um, liability and compliance, we need to make sure that everything's set up and is okay. So simple answer, yes but there will be some work that happens yeah with it's us. not a guarantee but if you're enthusiastic and keen and want to work in a particular area or mm. have a company or organization in mind yeah we can you know do our best to, yeah. to work with that and work with you to try and you know get that industry on board yeah yeah maybe so one another, other question another thing was um your projects seem to be primarily based in tropical systems what can you offer students living or studying in temperate regions so firstly the the knowledge and the understanding and the skills that you develop through our courses are applicable in the general like in all the oceans right mm. you're not learning things that are only relevant for particular areas mm. there's a couple of units like some of the coral units that we have many units that mm. are offered mm. you know um you still get to learn about corals you get to really go in depth in a range of ecosystems and we cover seagrasses we look at mangroves the coral reefs you know general fish monitoring um, survey techniques uh, environmental assessment uh, yeah and, and we have our students so obviously you're learning skills so mm. how you make a quadrant and use a line belt and photography underwater and all that sort of stuff which applies to any habitat mm. but we have students who are studying you, you have to understand the course only started last year yeah. so our first lot of students basically are mostly here on the gold coast yeah. but we now have a number of students who are in north queensland we have people in melbourne darwin um, and those people who can't come for the, the pracs that stuff, happen, yeah. they come to what we call a condensed prac. Yep. So we have a group of students who are coming in two weeks time. So they Actually, will do- shorter than that. Oh, sorry. End of this week. Oh my gosh. It's already, it's time, coming on Friday. Time is <laughs> yeah. So they're coming and they will do a six day condensed prac. Yeah. Um, and so that allows them to come to the Gold Coast and explore these habitats down the track. We will also explore, you know, take people to other habitats around mm. Australia, and that's part yeah. of connecting with industry as well. And as we expand, yeah, you know, open the course a, a, up a, more across across Australia and increase our capacity and resources, mm. and you know, networks with um, you know industry reps and mm. our trainers and team. We're going to be able to offer more and, and and to diversify. But already, you can study online um, and attend, you know condensed prax or you can study online and be still coming face to face for particular activities so it's very flexible it is very flexible and all you need to do is contact us to discuss it further mm. i'd like to thank you all so much 
Uh, it's been, um, we've had a lot to cover, but I th yeah. I've really enjoyed speaking to all of you. I've really enjoyed hosting with you, Scott. Having a good yarn yes. and covering some cool stuff. And watching those, um, the presenters has mm. been, you know, really eye opening. I'd just like to mention what I mentioned at the beginning, and that is about receiving an email. So you are all going to receive an email. You um, would have seen that we had industry present to you. So Tangaroa Blue, help me out here, Sustainable of Oceans, Sustainable Oceans. Uh, Morton Bay, Dean, Dean's, Dean's Company, yeah, yep. Dean's company. We've had Inlock, we have We've Inlock. Had Jacob's Well. Jacob's well. Yeah, I think I've know. covered them all. Any, more. Anyway, we're going to send out an email um, and there may be other industry who contact us. We'll have yep. a list of the people. If you're interested in, in working in that particular industry with that particular company and you want to ask them some questions, then you just need to let us know. We'll send you a link. There'll be a meeting with all other people who are interested mm -hmm. and you will be able to have a conversation, an interactive conversation with the, um, the lead person or a representative from the company to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. And we'd also love it if you could give us some feedback on what you think about our course, what you think about the vocational placement, uh, if the webinar was helpful, mm. any feedback is really appreciated. For any for any um, any industry representatives who didn't register and they're watching online live or the replay, mm. um, send us an email, get in touch with Envirotech and, and express your interest and we can connect you connect with you and find out more about what you can offer. And even if you don't have full clarity right now on the potential opportunities, mm. we can look at it, we can explore it and we can connect further. And we love exploring it together. So Definitely. if you need to contact us, you can contact us at info, um, dot Envirotech, the, info the, at Envirotech. Oh, sorry. Info, I never email it. Info at Envirotech, okay, it's there on the screen for you. You can always go to our website. You can contact us through LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook we're everywhere. You can just send us good juju and yes. we can connect, whatever you want. We would love to talk to you. Thank you so much. Been Thank you to the tech team, uh, all the people behind the scenes. There's really been a lot of work that's gone into this and we look forward to speaking to you again at the next yeah. webinar. Um, if not, face to face. Huge afternoon. Thank you, Paula. Thank, Thank you, everyone who joined us, who's uh, supported our initiatives. We look forward to working with you and everyone out there. Continue to do everything you can to make a difference in the world. And happy, all of your ha happy World happy Oceans world Day. Ocean Day. Remember, everything you do has an impact and a consequence. So it does. Keep creating uh, a healthier, restorative, wonderful Earth. Man, what a big afternoon. Thank you. Yeah.